here on top of the Empire State Building. I welcome you to the 86th floor and lucky episode 13 of the Dudley Simpson is Doctor Who project. It was here on the south aspect of the observatory just after noon on a pleasant day in 1966 that a kind, friendly, guileless young man from Alabama met first four strange Brits, probably from Hollywood, who emerged from a beat up old blue wooden box, who then just kind of like vanished. Moments later, he fought the giggles as he met an ugly looking critter with a camera mounted around its middle. Well, you know what movie people are like. And it also disappeared. He had no idea how lucky he was to survive the meeting with a Dalek although he might have ended up in Bellevue afterwards anyway. Setting the stage for this comic scene in episode three of The Chase, Dudley Simpson's 30 seconds of whirlwind music is an oral impression of the traffic-filled crush of people, hustle and bustle of New York City. And what is still one of its most iconic structures, the Empire State Building. As stock footage of the Statue of Liberty, Midtown Manhattan, and the Empire State Building fill the screen, Simpsons music fills the ear, with perhaps a little Gershwin, perhaps a little Bernstein, but a lot of fun. The piano shouts repeated octave Ds underneath rising major triads by the guitar and clarinet, starting on D major and finishing with a staccato accented G flat major. Half step above the harmony of the initial melody we're about to hear. The piano trickles down, doubled two octaves apart, first suggesting the whole tone scale, then a bit of the octatonic scale. That's a popular scale in the chase, as we discussed in the previous episode of the project. We land on an F major harmony with a simple bass line played by the piano. Above, a jazzy clarinet melody using the dominant seventh note E-flat fiddles around while the piano plays a descending chromatic counter line from C down to A. In my arrangement, I couldn't differentiate between these two lines until the second measure because they're playing the exact same C. The clarinet's three-bar melody elides with the next three-bar phrase, still over F harmony, jarring major second clusters in the piano and xylophone. These dissonant honks use notes very foreign to F major, D flat E flat and G flat A flat. The clarinet reaches in and pulls us out of traffic, sliding out of F into E, while the piano in octaves exclaims a jolly three bar melody underneath the guitar's B minor rhythmic timekeeping. With so much going on in this phrase, I could include only two beats of the guitar's chording. Towards the end of the phrase, the piano plays solo, an echo of the honking clusters and a wry C-sharp major car horn. The clarinet retakes the melody, and as visually we focus more on the building itself, the music takes on a more vertical character. The melody rises, first reflecting the B minor harmony with the melodic minor scale. 
Then a very interesting thing happens. The clarinet's melody becomes decidedly B flat major. But the harmony of the guitar is decidedly D dominant 7. This passage is marvelously bitonal, suggesting two keys at once. The orchestration of this passage is fairly dense. The clarinet and guitar parts are clear, but there are buoyant insertions by both the piano and the xylophone, sometimes doubling the clarinet line, but other times offering commentary that I couldn't realize in my arrangement without compromising the most important elements. However, I could suggest some of them by doubling some notes at the octave. After this bitonal passage, the vertical character of the music takes over, rising chromatically at speed in the piano's octaves, while descending in the clarinet counterline. Executing these lines in this arrangement takes a bit of finesse as the clarinet line starts in a higher register than the piano, but soon they cross over each other. The left hand's clarinet starts above the right, and they mustn't get tangled up. The ascending piano line finishes with a return to F, albeit very briefly. The piano and xylophone parts create a devilish problem for the piano arrangement. The xylophone seems to jump in octaves, but the piano line makes another juicy dissonance by leaping in major sevenths only, that is F up to E. When played together, the right hand must rapidly alternate octaves and minor ninths. Very difficult to handle accurately. I don't know why I torture myself sometimes. Underneath, the guitar and clarinet, and perhaps the piano left hand, descends with jazzy chords suggesting flat five harmony. As we mix through from the might of the tower into the scene on the observatory, the piano plays an improvisatory run, first in the right hand alone, then joined by the left in parallel major second clusters, like an oral representation of the settling of the scene onto the small stage of the observatory. As the scene begins, focusing on a number of smart looking tourists, the clarinet plays a bluesy, sophisticated line the guitar and piano supporting with E-flat dominant seventh, as the snare drum is playing brushes, furthering the jazzy scene. The guitar comments on the curious sexiness of the clarinet with a slurred line of its own. This final clarinet line is reiterated at the end of the scene as the crowd of tourists return to discover the rube from Alabama behaving like a nut even though he's quite right to do so. Funny that. Thank you very much for visiting episode 13 of the Dudley Simpson Is Doctor Who Project. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. See you next time. Oh look, it's the mighty Hudson River.